Have you ever been to an Indian reservation? If you have, you probably saw serious poverty and alcoholism and drug abuse. Is it because there's something about Indians that makes them lazy or irresponsible? No. When Indians own their own land, they do about as well as other Americans. Manny Jules wants to see more of that. He was chief of the Kamloops Indian Band in Canada for 16 years. Manny, why are so many Indians so poor? Well, first of all, John, nobody chooses poverty. One of the things that's happened is we've been legislated out of the economy by the federal governments, both in the United States and Canada. What do you mean they've been taking care of you? That sounds like the best deal. It, well, the, by taking care of us, that means providing social welfare programs. The only way to break the cycle of poverty, I believe, is by the recognition that every other Canadian and American takes for granted, and that's real property rights. So in Canada, as in much of the U.S., reserves the, are owned by the government. Yes. So the Indian has some piece of paper that says, this is my lot. But underlying that title is the fact that in Canada, the federal government owns the land. So you can't borrow against it. You, you can't, can't borrow, you can't get a mortgage, you can't be bonded. There's nothing that you can have that'll be, allow you to be able to go to the bank on your own without the minister co-signing that loan. Uh, let's bring another guest from PERC, uh, economist Terry Anderson into this. Terry, you find Indians do much better when they own their own land. Yes, John. I uh, first got interested in this subject in 1976 when I visited a, a member of the Flathead Indian Reservation. And while uh, visiting his house, I, I noted just how well off he was. He was not in poverty. And I asked, how do you explain this? And I'll never forget him leaning across the table, uh, resting his chin on his hand and elbow, saying, I own this place. And that was my first introduction to the fact that many uh, reservations in the United States do have some fee simple land, that is, privately owned land like you and I own our houses. And uh, the Indians that have privately owned land do much, much better. Their land is way more productive than the land that is overseen by the federal government, held in 40 trust. 40 to 90 as Manny percent said, more productive, you found. Yes, the, 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 the statistics are just astounding. I've done a lot of uh, gathering of those data, and they show that, uh, that fee simple lands are anywhere from 40 to 90 percent more productive. Uh, than the, the lands held in trust. And as Manny said, uh, these Indians who have their land under the trusteeship of the federal government can't borrow against them. Uh, they are, are really locked into a poverty cycle as a result. It is pretty amazing that no group has been more taken care of by big government than the Indians, and no group in America has done worse. Uh, well, th fundamentally, the, the, the root of the problem is the fact that we don't have the same property rights as others take for granted. And that has to fundamentally change. We have to be able to recognize the collective ownership by the tribe or the band and free the imagination of the individual entrepreneur. We've had economies that went back many, many millennia and were successful until 1492. And... Terry, you found that, that Indians had a form of, proper, of, of property rights before white settlers came here and messed that up. Before, before contact with whites, Indians were, were very much aware of markets and trading and property rights. Uh, some Indians actually owned the salmon streams. They managed those streams so that they let the larger salmon go up to spawn. And the result is that even today, those streams have larger salmon than the streams that were held in a commons, uh, owned by everyone and hence managed by no one. The clan, not an individual Indian, but a clan would own the stream. And why today would they still have more salmon? That just goes back to, to what was superior management uh, uh, over a century ago. And, and at the same time, I should note, we are mismanaging our salmon stocks by chasing them around the ocean, uh, open ocean, and uh, over-harvesting salmon and many other fish species. We could learn from what the Native Americans uh, uh, did to husband their resources. And you say you can see the private property difference just by driving through some Indian land. 
Oh, it's, it's fascinating to drive through a reservation in the West. Uh, recently, uh, I drove through the Crow Indian Reservation in South Central Montana, and when you would come to a fence line and on one side see overgrazing, a few uh, scrawny cattle, uh, maybe, maybe a house, and if so, not a very uh, uh, livable house, right next door you would see cultivated fields, irrigation systems, beautiful barn, home, and so on. And you don't even need to look at the property records to know that the productive one is held in private and the other one is held uh, in common, in trust by the federal government. Indians on both sides of the road, but private property on one. And you can even see it from the Exa Google Maps, the, the difference. You can see it from the Google Maps. It's, it's fascinating to just Google a reservation, the Blackfeet Reservation, the Crow yeah, here, Reservation. Here's Blackfeet. There's not much development, very few farms. Here's one where they have can, private property rights. You can see the same thing on Manny's reserves, where they have managed to develop an industrial park. They're creating jobs, creating wealth, and uh, at least getting uh, one foot up the ladder out of poverty. Manny, I'll give you the last word on this. Yeah, well, th what we have to do is reverse uh, 500 years of colonization, put First Nations, Indian tribes, in the driver's seat. We can be, be successful where the federal and governments in both countries have failed. And the only way that that ultimately can be resolved is by granting us the right to be able to own our own lands.